Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Things Happening at the Red Barn. And in this episode, we're gonna move from the Plastic Ice Engine Works header model to getting everything done up in stainless steel. I'm gonna cover a bit of technical background and detail about how I do things along the way, even though this is my first go at making headers. Uh, so let me know down below if you like that, if you like a little bit more, a little bit less information. And uh, here we go. Okay, with the design finalized, it's now time to convert all this to metal. The first thing I gotta do, remember, is I gotta get the flange off and I gotta get those mounting pieces out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this all apart, pull the flange off and get that work done. So now it's time to prep the exhaust flanges for the one inch spacer, spacer, the one inch straight section that we're gonna start the header uh, primaries with. Now this, is, this isn't one inch, but I'm just gonna use it to make the point. The surfaces are all ready to go, but if you look closely, I'll take it's almost the exact right shape on the inside. Probably you can just see a little bit of the ridge of the header flange in there. But look how much room there is on the outside, right? So because of the way that this flange was originally shaped, you can see it steps out quite a bit and it's got just a go to nothing edge, which if you try to weld on that, it just melts away. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called dicum and you paint it on, position the item, in this case, the tube where we want it. Now I'm gonna clamp this down, and with the tube clamped in place, I can now use a scribe, and I'm just gonna scribe all the way around the outside of that tube, but I've got a mark that shows me where the outside of that part now lives, and I can now go around this with a die grinder and remove the material down to that line knowing that that then locates the tube just where I want it. Okay, so the header flanges have been prepped. We ground back to, the, to that scribed line, and you can see now that whole super sharp edge is gone. So these are prepped and ready to go. The other thing was, uh, this is a US model, so it had air injection fittings. So those were sliced off, and rather than try to you know fill the whole thing, just went ahead and welded them up. They're gone now, but there were holes obviously that passed all the way through. Those have been welded up and then sanded uh, to be smooth. So now the process is take our one inch extensions that we cut, and then these get fit and then tacked in place, and then onto the engine they go, and we can start building from there. So let's go do that. And there's the header flange with the one inch extensions ready to go. Nice thing about these is they're, uh, you can just invert them so that on the car, what we'll do is we'll make sure that these are pointed down so from the top you won't see any of these bosses. But there you go. The header flange is set on. The first inch of stainless has been welded on or tacked on and the first tube has been fabricated. Uh, a lot of this is fairly boring, but um, the quick way, I'll just take you through a couple of things that, that help out. One is uh, Ice Engine Works makes these tools that are uh, guides for helping you cut the tubes that work on your bandsaw. I opted not to go that way uh, and ended up doing something simple like this, which is, let's say we need to cut this much of a two inch radius, which, so just a couple of straight blocks and you know, just slide the tube into position like this. And then if you just take your piece, it locates on the tube and you just push it up until it contacts that straight edge as well. And then now all I need to do is carefully, you know, I'm not gonna really do it. I'm just making this as an example, but you know, that's not in the right spot, but you get the idea. Um, carefully mark where that is and then take it to the bandsaw and cut it to that, which is what was done here. And so we have this one part of a two inch radius, did the same thing over here, worked out the second part of the two inch radius, and here's the third part of a two inch radius. So the design approach is gonna be, we know we have to have a weld seam here, but rather than you know put a weld seam here, we're gonna end up 
splitting all the tubes in this location. And then I think I'm gonna dress those welds and disappear them and make it look as though that was a, a formed tube. The other thing that's going on here from a get it right and get it in position, this first tube's critical because it locates so many different things. One is a block or a plate that's clamped to the engine cradle and then also clamped to, we left this long on purpose so that this could be clamped and that's gonna make sure that the angle this way is correct. And then a quick measure with the tape between the cradle and the tube in a couple places ensures that it's aligned this way. So we've got an alignment system figured out. We've got an approach to cutting the tubes to match everything that's in the plastic model. And there are some adjustments that are going on here along the way, just so you're aware. It's not gonna be the exact same as the model because of some of the things I've mentioned earlier. Another thing I'd point out is I did make the investment in these clamps, which are, you can see them in use here. They do a really nice job. This might not look like it's aligned and that's because it's not. Anytime there's a mandrel bend, the tube gets slightly oval. So this is just a fitment to get alignment marks. And then what we'll do is squeeze in the appropriate direction to get them back to round and match here. So in any case, these clamps are great. They really do a super job of holding these in place for tacking. But then instead of trying to do something here, uh, a simple piece of angle iron and some hose clamps ensures that that thing is dead straight with itself. So there's the process, and now it's just a matter of getting in and cutting and fitting the rest of this. Okay, one of the things that we're challenged by when we're working with curves and trying to, uh, you know, get one that's oriented maybe this way, and then, you know, you're trying to put a twist in the middle of the radius, is you can see that because it's been put through the mandrel bender, as Good a job as they can do that's still ovalized so we put it in the vise and rather than just squeeze it once from the side and potentially create a flat spot it's hit it a little bit here a little bit here a little bit here a little bit here and obviously it's an eyeball process to try to get this to come back to round right at this spot pause here for a second and then show you the other thing is find an appropriate sized that's not the right one find an appropriate sized you might recognize this from cutting the extensions there earlier but this has been shaped to start to go in here and you can see it's not quite ready to go but we'll keep working this and then use it potentially as uh, a device to force in there to get it back to round so and with a little bit of tweaking we now have the first tube tacked. One twist here, an extension here. This one's going to remain just clamped until we get everything to this same stage. Then everything can be pulled off and bench welded. It looks like it's going to work out just as hoped. Even gap between each of the tubes. And we're not probably not going to get the same radius, but I think this is the important thing is flat across here, even gap between the tubes. And uh, there you go. One down, seven to go. Here's another cool tool. It's just a flat plate with a slot in it and two pins. And you hold those two pins against the outside radius of the tube, mark in the slot, and the cut you make on that line is exactly perpendicular to the tube radius. Let's just do a quick review of what we got done so far. So what you saw me doing was making these tubes. I'm calling this, we're just counting backwards just to keep things, you know, in order. One, two, three, four. Not that that's the cylinder number. Heck, it might be. I haven't paid that much attention yet. But anyway, so 
this is going to be a two inch radius coming out. We've got this piece done, this piece done. Now you're going to notice there's gaps in places. This was just a first rough fit to get, you know, basic location, basic segments. These will be fine tuned. You, uh, you know, you'll get un, un ovalized as well. Uh, we've got this one made and it's interesting, right? That piece looks like it might work in both of those places. So it's essentially just a five inch segment of a three inch radius. So it allows me to play this game for fitment, right? And again, you know, little bits of adjustment off, but this makes the point. And here's the cool thing in my book with number one in position and number four in position, I'm going to get a dead flat plane across all of those. Why am I worried about stuff like that? You keep hearing me say style points, and there's something to me that's just, you know, when things are either symmetrical or purposefully asymmetrical or aligned like this, I don't know. I just get kind of a feeling. I get a vibe from the from the car or from that part of the car that, uh, that I like. So I take the time to... Uh, to treat myself and spend more time. I think it's worth it. I enjoy it and all that good stuff. So there is the progress so far. Number three is gonna be a bit tricky because as you can see, it comes nicely around this corner in line, but then it does a, a quick little jog uh, down here. So getting that angle just right and the length just right. Um, and yeah, you can see things are slightly out of position out here, but you know this can be you know adjusted slightly, tweaked you know, sanded, but this is all well within range for uh, for what's going on. And for you physics geometry people out there, number three is going to be not equal length to everything else. It would have required this to be pushed out, you know, number four to be pushed way out here. And there's still clearance, but I, I just didn't want to risk it getting too close to the outside of the chassis. So I am going to give up a teeny bit of length on number three, but not so much that I can't deal with it. And it's, uh, it's better than the factory Ferrari header was in terms of uh, tube length. So it looks good. It's coming together nicely. The Ice Engine Works kit has paid off because even though I'm not modeling it exactly to what the kit was, <laughs> again, I could not have gotten anywhere near this close. And I'm really happy with how it's coming together. All right, a few hours later, a few, a bunch of hours later, and we have everything in stainless. And it worked out, it worked out just how I hoped. Uh, as I mentioned, that number three pipe, you can see with that jog, that was a bit tricky, that took a while. That was the most difficult miter to get just right. Um, but it got done. And as targeted, we got ourselves dead flat across that plane. Now, those radiuses didn't quite work out, you know, in every angle, but from certain angles, like back here, it looks really good. It looks really good. And then kind of the, the flat part, couldn't be happier with how that turned out. So now it's going to be a quick trim to get rid of most of the excess here, not all of it. And then the tubes are going to get pulled, bench welded put back in, final trimmed, and then the collector gets put on. So uh, we're getting dangerously close to having this one side done. And I'm, I'm suspecting the other side's gonna go quicker now that I know the specs, essentially the specs for each of these tubes. And we'll just uh, do our best to get an exact mirror image on the other side. All right, so there you go. Next time, we'll have uh, both headers all done and welded up. And then we're moving on to putting it back in the chassis and working out the rest of the exhaust. So. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, looking forward to hearing your questions and comments and subscribing, I hope. And we'll talk to you again next time. Take care.